Welcome to our series called The Seven Challenges and the Seven Solutions of Native American Ministry, especially in the urban centers. And I hope that this will be an encouragement to you who are veteran missionaries like myself, that God has been pleased to use us over many years, and sometimes it becomes very discouraging. So what we're going to be sharing in these challenges and solutions, I hope it will be encouragement to you, encouragement to you as it is to me. And then we understand that there's young people and young adults that want to uh, share in this ministry as well. And one of the, uh, the symbols that we're going to be using is uh, what Jesus said when he talked to his disciples about uh, fishing. He did not say, I want you to go out and take your fishing rod and go fishing. He talked about a net. And uh, we're going to be talking using that, that uh, symbolism of a net in reaching the Native American people. And so those that want to share and, and uh, come to us and to uh, work alongside of us, we want you to come prepared to take part of that net and hold up part of that net with us. And for those that have been working with Native American Ministries for many years, uh, we need to remember that we're just one part of holding up that net. In fact, as we think about um, the symbol that, that uh, God has ticket, given to us concerning the net, um, we're just to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, and that word equip means to mend the net. And so there are many broken hearts and broken lives out there that God has given us the privilege to share with, and we want to be doing that. So, first of all, let's just look at the overall view of the seven challenges and solutions. The first one we call, Don't Be a Lone Wolf. And in our Working with Native American Ministries, uh, God wants us to hold that net together. I can take you to a reservation where there are four evangelical churches where we do School Without Walls. My Native brother and myself, his name is Hugh Grant. And we can go there and we share the word at, uh, there on that reservation. And all these churches, we want to come together, but they don't come together to even... Uh, share the word with us. And so we go to one church and do a school without walls, and we come back, we have to do another school without walls and another church. They just haven't caught the vision of doing this work together. And I wonder, as the Native American people are watching these churches uh, that have been there for many, many years, um, they're probably saying, we do things together. Why doesn't the Christian church do things together? And so don't be a lone wolf. And that is a, a very... Uh, um, encouraging thought as we think about uh, God wanting us to do things together. And that leads us to another challenge, which is a challenge of uh, the enemy that we have to face. And that's a very powerful enemy. The scripture says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, we wrestle against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so as we deal with that second challenge, we're going to evaluate some of these spirit powers that we have to deal with. And, uh, and, the, and the solution is we need to pray together, corporate prayer, to seek the Lord together. And we're going to see how that happens in Acts chapter 13. And then also the third challenge deals with a sad part of our ministry because uh, of the 500 years of ministry that has not been such a, a, a wonderful ministry. I remember talking to a native brother up in the Northwest, and this is what he said. He's a brother that travels all around the world and, and uh, speaks about Native American um, issues. And this is what he said. David, I, I have no problem with your Jesus, but I sure hate Jesus' church. And um, so we're going to, at this challenge, we're going to talk about the white man's gospel and the white man's, uh, and the white man's religion, Jesus being the white man's God. And how can we, in a loving and, and sensitive and, and uh, loving way, uh, deal with this particular problem that we're, we're faced with? And then the fourth and fifth challenges go together, and it deals with the, with the urban scene. And 65% um, of Native American people now live in the urban centers, according to BIA statistics. And here we're going to need your help. We're going to ask your help to, to help us achieve, to do a demographic survey, and we're going to help you to, to do just that. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Native American culture and the, and the reservations in the U.S. and the reserves among the First Nations people in Canada and the villages of Alaska. 
And, and how do the people live? And when they come to the urban centers, what changes do they face in dealing with this? I read an article in the newspaper that said this, uh, red, I was born red, but raised white. And that's a real dilemma, that's a real tension that Native Americans have to face. And then we're gonna to come to the sixth challenge, and that deals with a major social issue. And I wish my Native brother Hugh was here to talk to you about this. This is what he would say. Boy takes a drink, drink takes a boy. Man takes a drink, drink takes a man. He knows all about the loss because of alcoholism and now in the youth among drug addictions and other addictions that we face. And so we're going to look at the 12-step program from a biblical viewpoint and hopefully be, be uh, helpful in that area as well. And then we come to the seventh challenge, and the seventh challenge deals with the power of indigenous church. And we're going to talk about the five um, felt needs among Native American people that really white churches, white pastors have not the slightest idea of how to deal with, such as low self-esteem among Native American people because of the lifestyle and the fear of the spirit world and sin and, and shame. In our Western culture, we think of, we, we deal in our theological uh, jargon about justification and guilt, but in the indigenous culture, it's all about sin and shame. And um, then also uh, thoughts about harmony. Harmony is a key word of, among the indigenous peoples. And uh, also sickness. And so we're looking at these, these five felt needs and how can we, through a, the power of indigenous church, work to help Native American people understand these felt needs and how, how to deal with them. And then um, we're going to look at the power of evangelism. Jesus taught us in Friendship Evangelism. Uh, a friend of mine wrote a book called Friendship Evangelism, and this is what he said. People won't hear the gospel till they see the gospel. And uh, so we're going to look at how Jesus dealt with friendship evangelism and the power of, the, of uh, the gospel and the power of discipleship. So we have a lot of territory to carry, uh, to, to work with here in this uh, series called um, The Seven Challenges and Seven Solutions, and we hope to whet your appetite to think about what we're going to get into right now. And so the first challenge... The first challenge is don't be a lone wolf. I want to share a, a story that uh, really helped me to see the uh, importance of this, this thought, don't be a lone wolf. When I was in the village of Alaska, a friend of mine came to me, a native friend, and he walked, walked knocked on my door, and he says, uh, we need your help, David. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go. And so we went down to the beach, and there I saw his fish wheel was was stuck in the mud, and, uh, and there was a number of native men there with their long poles trying to, to pry that fish wheel out of the mud. And then just down the beach a little ways, there was another fish wheel caught in the mud too, and another group of men were down there with their long poles just trying to pry that fish wheel out of the, uh, out of the mud. And I, I, I saw the problem. We're not getting our fish wheel out, and they're not getting their fish wheel out. And I made a suggestion to my native brother, and I says, well, uh, what if we could go and help them get their fish wheel out uh, using our manpower, and then after they get their fish wheel out, then would they, they could come back and help us get our fish wheel out. And um, he said, we don't do that anymore. He said, you know, we used to work together. We used to cooperate together. We built our houses together, but because we are in competition with each other as far as money is concerned, uh, i got to get my fish wheel out first. I thought about that. Well, that's what he wants to do. And so he went up and he got his four-by uh, at, at, the, at the, uh, the top of the beach. And... Uh, then before that, he put out uh, a long pole and put this long pole right next to his fish wheel uh, on uh, these cement blocks. And so we had these series of cement blocks and this pole sticking to his fish wheel. And he went up and got into his, his uh, four by, and he's coming running down the beach as fast as he could go. And I'm, everybody spread out, and we didn't know what was going to happen. And he hit that, he hit that pole with his four by and nothing budged but his four by. Uh, his axle broke. Well, guess who was laughing down the beach? 
when they watch this situation, uh, trying to get their fish wheel out. You know, that really pictures this idea of don't be a lone wolf. We need to work together. Jesus told his disciples, don't take your, you don't go out fishing with a, uh, a fishing rod. I was with my son on the Russian River, and we were amateur fishermen, and we were fishing shoulder to shoulder with, our, with these, these uh, expert men that had all their equipment. And we got into the middle of, of fishing with them shoulder to shoulder. We're throwing out our rod. Our, 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 we're throwing out our, our uh, fishing line to catch fish. And we felt very uncomfortable because we didn't want to get our line caught up with others. But that's not how Jesus said to his disciples, go fishing with a fishing rod. He used the analogy of the fishing net. And they went out with a net to fish together. And they were out there catching fish. And so we're asking you folks that really want to come and work with us, that you come with the idea that you're going to just take one part of that net and hold it up with us. As veteran missionaries, we're working with Native American people and Native American uh, brothers themselves working together. We're all working together, holding this net. Now, I want to share this thought with, with us that have been working with Native American people. We think we need to do this all our, on our own. And Jesus says, our work is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. That word equipped is very important because it, it literally means to mend the net. And our work is to mend broken lives. We are to go to places in the reserves in Canada, reservations in the cities, for the purpose of just helping people mend their lives. That's what the School of Walls is all about. So my brother Hugh and I, we work together as we go and uh, meet these people and spend time not just teaching them in the churches, but we spend time in their homes and we pray with them. And we're there to mend their lives, to build them up, to strengthen them and encourage them in the Lord. In fact, the word discipleship is summarized by two words. And when we go to, to do these school without walls, we emphasize discipleship is we have come to disciple the nations, like the scripture says in the, in the uh, Great Commission. And that word discipleship really is summarized by strengthening and encouraging. And the word strengthening means to fix your faith firm. And so we've come to fix their faith firm in the Word of God. We don't do this through culture. Uh, there are some groups that do this with culture. I've talked to another native brother, and he says, you I said to him, you disciple through culture. We disciple through the Word of God. And that's what they thirst for. And so when you and I go and others go, they, people, want the Word of God. And that's how they fix their faith firm. And when we share the Word of God together, we see some good things happen. The word encourage is really the word for the Holy Spirit, to come alongside of, for the purpose of encouraging. And so when we go and do these school without walls, we come to encourage them. We're not to do the work of the ministry. We are, we are there for the purpose of equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. And that word, to mend the net, means a lot. That's what we're here to do, is to mend broken lives. And I've been with my brother Hugh, and he knows all about what broken lives are all about. And, and he's, he's experienced it. And he goes and he prays with these people and he shares his testimony. And um, people really respond. And so we watch this happen time and time and time again. To equip the saint to do the work of the ministry. That's what chief is all about. That's what discipleship is all about. And we make that very clear when we come to these places and, and uh, share the school without walls. We've come here to strengthen and encourage you. And we encourage, uh, I, I really want to encourage those that uh, have been doing the work of the ministry, veteran missionaries, whether native or white, or whatever the, uh, the, the ethnic background may be, don't do this work alone. You're, you're to, to, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, and when you see them take a hold of their part of the net, that should encourage us. And you know what's really happening today? As uh, we think about uh, God raising up this, uh, this sleeping giant, I hope this encourages us as veteran missionaries. God is raising up a new generation, another generation, this new generation to take a hold of the net and, uh, and throw out that net among the Native American people that God wants to bring to himself. So you veteran missionaries, be encouraged. God is definitely raising up a new generation 
uh, as we find here, it's waking up the sleeping giant of missions. And so be encouraged, be strengthened, but don't think you have to do this work alone. We use this title, Don't Be a Lone Wolf for a Purpose. The uh, a, wolf's, uh, a wolf does not uh, hunt its prey by itself. It, it hunts in packs. And that's what I think nature is trying to teach us, that we need to do this, this work together. There is a, uh, there's a, a thought that God has shared with me called the, this primary secondary team that really encourages me and also my brother Hugh. The primary team is God. Did you know from the very first words of the scripture, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? God re has revealed himself as Elohim, and that's a plural suffix to that, that title of God. So from the very beginning, God is saying to his people, I am the Father, the Almighty Father. I am the Almighty Son. I'm all the Almighty Spirit. Let us make man in our own image. It's a team relationship. It's a, it's a togetherness that God, the Father, the Son, and Spirit of God are, are involved in. The Father is the sender, all right? The Son of God is, a, is the missionary, sent one. That's what missionary means, sent one. He's the one who has been sent by the Father. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those under the law. And he's come to accomplish the work of salvation. He's come to do the will of his Father. He speaks of that. He's come to do the, the works of his Father, to speak the words of his Father. And the works of his Father is to accomplish the work of salvation. And he's done that through his death and resurrection. And then we have the great missionary of the primary team, which, which I think is the great missionary, the Holy Spirit. And from the very first, uh, after the fall, the Holy Spirit has been applying the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection to the Son from every tribe, tongue, and nation. Uh, before the flood and after the flood. We're going to talk about that in our second, our second challenge. And the Holy Spirit, as we are, uh, as I'm standing here sharing this and you're sitting there watching this, be encouraged. The Holy Spirit, the primary team, is out there convincing men of sin, of righteousness, of judgment to come. And uh, the word of God is being proclaimed by the Holy Spirit as God is revealing himself to all the nations. We, we find that in Romans chapter 1, that God in love has revealed himself to the sum of every tribe, tongue, and nation. When we go to Vancouver, British Columbia to work among the prostitutes and the alcoholics and the drug addicts, we often, often say, you know, as we speak to you folks that are sitting listening to us before you receive your food, we realize they all here don't want the word of God, but there's always the sum that do. And when we offer a time of prayer, the sum comes. And we pray with them. And we see God begin to mend those nets in their lives. And there, there are many people there in, in that ministry at the Potter's House that we have the privilege to go and to, to share time and time and time again to do this work of the ministry. That's the primary team. But the secondary team of the first century, do you know who they were? They were the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself spent one whole year, one whole year of his ministry, uh, discipling, training those men because he knew that they were the ones to carry out his work. We have Paul and we have Barnabas. We have Silas. We have Timothy. We have the historian Luke. We have Aquila and Priscilla, a husband and wife team, working together, holding the net, throwing the net out to bring people to the, uh, the work that God has uh, for them to do together. And Paul's encouraged by meeting uh, Quilla and Priscilla, and watching them go from place to place, doing the work of the ministry together. And who's the, who's the, who's the secondary team members of the, of the 20th and 21st century? Well, we're looking right at them. You folks, you, you men and women, you young people that, that want to come and work with Chief, you are the secondary team, and we encourage you to come and to share that ministry and pick up that part of the net with us and help us to do this work of the ministry together. And those of us who are veteran missionaries that have been working with Native American people and the Native American people themselves uh, that have been discouraged over many, many years, be encouraged that the primary team is at work. And we are, he, the primary team, the Father, Son, and Spirit, especially the Holy Spirit, is sending us out. And so we, uh, 
We just need to, to think and be encouraged that God is uh, doing a wonderful work and we have the privilege to be part of this. The solution, one of the solutions we think about in this uh, type of ministry is uh, a gathering. Now, as I shared with you, I can take you to that reservation where there are four evangelical churches and they're not working together. And when we do our school without walls, we go to one. We hope the others will come, but they don't come. They haven't caught the vision. And I'm sure that story can be told time and time and time again, whether the city, reserves in Canada, the villages of Alaska, or the reservations of the United States. We need to work together. I mean, let nature teach us that way. That's what we call this, this, uh, uh, this challenge, don't be a lone wolf. And uh, we need desperately to work together. And so you can do that by a gathering. And what we did as far as the gathering is concerned, we gathered together for eating and, and sharing uh, food together around the tables. And then afterwards, the council, one of the council members of the gathering, would get up and facilitate the meeting. And uh, we encouraged people to come and to share the Word of God. What did the Word of God speak to you uh, this month? And they would come maybe and sing a song, or they would just share a verse of Scripture, and they would share their, their testimonies. And that was greatly encouraging to many people that sat around the tables and listened. But really what was really important for Hugh and myself, we actually saw in Acts chapter 13 being worked out together. That's where they came together and they came for worshiping. We're going to talk about this in, in our challenge number two as far as a prayer summit is concerned. But they came together, the church came together for prayer and worship. And then the Holy Spirit came and said, here's the strategy. Send apart these two men for the work which I have called them to do the work of the ministry. And uh, that was Paul, that was Saul and Barnabas, and they went out. And what encourages me that they may not have known what, what they're doing. They probably went to Cyprus because that's where Barnabas' relatives were. They had no idea what church planting was all about or building the church. But they went out because the Holy Spirit, the primary team, was sending them out. And so when we come together at that gathering, the council members come and others come and lay hands on you and myself. And they pray for us and they send us out. And we do the work of the ministry. And we come back and report to them, just like the early church did. And uh, so we're living. We live the primary secondary team relationship. And it's such an encouragement to us. And so in conclusion, we just want to share this thought. Don't be a lone God wants us to take part of that net together, just hold one part of that net. When they were out there fishing in the, in the Sea of Galilee, only one person could take part of that net. The, the boats were working together to bring all that fish in. God did not tell us to take a fishing rod to go out there and stand shoulder to shoulder like we were doing the Russian River in Alaska. He, he used the analogy of a net. And don't forget, veteran missionaries, don't, you're not there to do the work alone. You're there for the purpose of equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. And so the, get out of our ivory towers and go to the homes and, uh, and, and pray with the people and speak to the people because they need to have their broken lives and their broken hearts mended so that they can become part of the ministry of, of holding their part of that as we work together to do this work of, of evangelism and discipleship. So thank you very much.